Good morning. It's Thursday, December 7th. It's about 9 a.m. Um, down here at the mill. We have today for you a lovely, ugly white pine log. Pretty straight. Uh, measures in at just over 10 feet. Um, it's about 22, 24 inches thick on either end. Going to use that to make some barn board today uh, for some projects that we have coming up. So put it on time lapse, do a little bit of this, that, and the other thing, stack the wood, run around, and um, hopefully make some beautiful lumber out of this. I've been pulling a lot of the older logs I have had corded for years. Um, you know, it looks like trash, but there's a tremendous beauty inside. There's a lot of value, but I save a lot of crazy stuff. I was once told that the only difference between me and the yellow man was that he was yellow. And uh, there's a lot of truth to that statement. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to put this on time lapse photography, and uh, you'll see me run back and forth at high speed, and then put a little music to it and see how this video comes out. Well, hello again. It is, it was, when I hit play, record, it was 11.20. And it is invisible. It's 11.39 right now, so in that short amount of time, I cleared right through that log and I got a dozen 1 by 12 by 10s. So that was uh, 19 minutes, ran out of gas, which is... Uh, an expert mistake um, and that's it gonna uh, flip that log around it's down to the wane now so not much left of it anymore but gonna go and I have uh, I have a lot more wood so we got a pile right here that I'm gonna go through got white pine and then there's a hemlock here that I'm gonna try to make into uh, clapboards by moving the log uh, every cut lifting it up five degrees, cutting, dropping it down five degrees, cutting, lifting it up five degrees. And I think by adjusting the orientation of the log, uh, such as that, I'll be able to cut clapboards with this saw. So this saw is phenomenal. If you see by the time I return to the saw, I'm able to reset the saw and send it again. So this is all um, down to a millisecond. The man that designed this saw is phenomenal. And, he doesn't get much credit for what he made. There's an integral lumber return mechanism that goes on this saw, as well as a saw return that we haven't set up. And what that does is you position the saw return on the track about a foot or two beyond the end of the cut. And the saw will pass the end of the cut, trip the, the return mechanism, and then a little lever drops down and it pulls the cut piece of wood back to the operator and you're able to go and put it behind you um, and stack it. So two people on this mill is tremendous because you can sticker and stack the wood and band it and it's done in one touch which really consolidates the motions that go into this work which is very labor intensive. People don't know how labor and time intensive the drying and seasoning of conventional lumber can be but um, there's millions of unread books on it. So um, that's it for recording today. I'm going to get back to work and see what I can get done with the rest of today. Seems like we got a big storm coming through Sunday night into Monday morning. Um, and we might be set up for a pretty wild winter. So we're going to get everything greased and sharpened for the week to come. And uh, probably mill one more log before the end of today. But that's it. Shout out Black and Mild too. You saw that.
down to the nitty gritty on this one. As you can see, there's very minimal waste. And then the log has a wane where it, um, the, the wood that you're cutting meets the bark and the wane is that taper that runs into the cut. So we've encountered the wane on both sides and I brought it down to the um, maximum allowable passage of the saw over the deck. So brought it down to the last remaining inch and the real beauty of this saw as opposed to others is a band saw will cut flat but you have to make your initial cut on the top of the log it's called a slabbing cut you take off that round piece you flip the log all the way over which can be labor intensive and dangerous especially when working alone then you make your next slab cut and that slab cut um, makes two parallel faces on top of the log and then one of the most difficult aspects is you then have to turn that vertical with this which is called a logging pike or a cant a lot of people would punch me in the face for using the wrong verbiage and assuming that I'm a lumberjack but uh cant hook pv um I don't know what to call it in French but they take the most offense but uh this in order to properly season and store lumber you need to stack it and put what's called stickers between the wood which are one by one by however wide the pile is every 12 inches underneath the pile of wood as you go and you put your stickers down then you put your wood on top then you put stickers on top of that you put your wood on top you put stickers on top of that so it's very labor intensive not only to pile the wood but to make the stickers because to make the stickers on a bandsaw mill can be really rather challenging with this saw on the other hand you're able to make it in one pass and have it exactly one by one by however long the log is so that's what i'm going to do with the last bit of this um this will be waste after that it'll probably go for use in the chicken coop or um a bridge to anal bifida or something like that and we'll throw that in the uh the back and that'll be the end of that log so even though i do destroy trees we are using this as a resource um and then i like to ornately stack it to perfection uh and let it rot somewhere so it goes to heaven with its friends in a in an organized manner so hopefully the wood will have a use and um it won't rot like i said but we just got to make sure we use it and that's it for now you'll watch me uh cut those stickers and that'll be the end of the video